Hi, it's Tom here from FDS, and today we're going to look at this, which is the Worker Hurricane. Now, I'm not doing a review on this because there's lots of other people who've done reviews. If you noticed, I published some chrono testing results on this where I looked at swapping the wheels and upgrading the um, internals a little bit in terms of changing the battery out for LiPo and stuff like that. And um, today I'm going to run you through the mod guide, and what we're going to do is we are going to let's move the shell completely rewire this now using proper quality components and we are going to put into it hopefully one of these which is the Britnerf open source board you can see there got the Britnerf logo on the back there and uh, this is one that uh, I was sent um, by Boftac sees the designer of this board and I'm going to try and install one of these the only place you can fit this is down in here there's not really much space See any problem with this shell, and if you want to make a plug-in motor block, then you have to put the plug up here, um, in this section here. And my design allows you to retain the battery tray with a little X260 plug on the end, um, so that you can then run IMRs if you want. That gives you the choice of being under 100 FPS dead, um, or going a little bit higher if you want to run LiPo. And the idea is, is that it's a fully modular loom. My design also retains the arming switch, and instead of putting 20 amps or more through this tiny little pathetic weenie, baby sub miniature switch uh, that'll only carry signal current in my design which obviously because we use the MOSFET for the high current switching that solves a lot of those issues so I think this is a good design it does cram the interior a little bit and um, but as you know when I do my mods I aim to get the best possible fittings and um, quality and I feel that uh, it's much better to start from scratch and make something really really robust so the first thing to do is to strip out all of the wire now this wire is probably reusable, if you're just sticking an XT60 plug on the end or whatever, then it's probably fine. Personally, I don't like to use wire that I don't have a spec for, so I buy my wire from a wire component supplier who provides the manufacturer's data sheet which tells me what my maximum current loading is, and it guarantees that the component is up to that standard. So we're going to take this out. I'm retaining everything internally exactly the same, so if you're doing this for the first time, take a picture so you remember how it all goes. And uh, you have to watch out when you're reinstalling for this, uh, getting the springs in the right place and around the switch. So we're going to pull out first. I won't show you that bit because it's boring. And what we're going to then start on is by laying all the power cables out. Okay, we're back to the bare shell now. And uh, I'll just show you briefly where I'm going to run the wiring. I'm going to keep the main wiring through this slot, go round here. The areas to watch out for is really tight in here around the motor bells. For some reason they couldn't make the shell 3mm thicker to accommodate a little bit more space around these. I'd like to see somebody make a little 3D printed plate to go over the back here if that's what someone wants to do. Just to give you a bit more room, so especially when you change the motors. One of the things I've noticed is where they've squashed these down is that there's a tendency for bits of solder to get between the tag and the can and cause a short and actually blew up a number of MOSFETs um, in testing while I was looking at working this loom out especially on this one where it gets pushed down. So when you redo the loom, and uh, I've just redone the motor block exactly like they have, except I've put my wiring in, is it's always worth putting a little bit of sleeving. What I'll do is I'll slide a piece of insulated heat shrink right across the terminal. If it does get pushed down here and this gets squashed onto the can, it won't cause a short. So that's just well worth doing. Just put a little piece across there just to hide that. So there's a little extra tip and uh, now I'm going to lay the wiring out. Alright, here's the uh, bare bones of the loom. So what you've got, two main power wires, just positive and negative. Uh, when you're using one of these, they go right the way front to back and if you're putting the FET in here anyway, which is the only place you can fit it, you're probably going to want um, at least the black wire to go all that way. Um, if you're using the separate components, they will fit in here if you loop them over carefully and work them around. I know I've tested it because I've built one without and this board's all labelled, um, it's exactly the same as um, previous iterations in terms of um, components and how they're laid out. There's a few improvements on this one, there's another version of this board due out soon. If you want to get hold of one of these, um, UK Nerf War has them, and uh, I don't know if Boftac has any, and um, if you contact uh, Suez12 on the forum, he also has some. If you're in Europe, he's in Denmark, which may be easier for some of you. And uh, these are a nice easy board to use and I'll run through soldering those. So what I've got now is I've got the red line which is going to be the power to the switches. So this is signal wire so it doesn't have to be thick. And then that's the return coming back out the switches. So this one will start by going into that arming switch 
and then it'll come back out on this one because we're using the standard Britnev wiring scheme. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some um, little bits of um, heat shrink around that loom just to neaten it up. I like to keep my looms all tidy and linked together so that I'll put those and then I'm going to um, start installing components. Um, all neatly bound together and you can see I've just left enough here with the pigtails just to have the XT60 hang a little bit over the end and you don't want a lot in here. The other thing you need to do when you do this mod is you're going to need to take off these little wings here that support the battery tray. Um, when you've done the battery tray and you've modded it so that it all goes in with an XT60, the XT60 actually sits there and the battery can sit on top of it and that holds the tray real nice. So take those four wings off and we'll do that near the end. Right, switch. Uh, you've got the common in the middle and then the two poles for opposite ends. If you get those round the wrong way, it doesn't matter massively. Switches work both directions and it just mean that you're off and on. You'll have to rotate the switch. So I'm going to run the red one into the middle like that. You have to be careful not to foul this uh, movement of the mag holder here. So you've got to cut quite carefully. So the next one to go on is the little spur now to come off. That's going to be the one that goes to the micro switch. We're going to run a little spur off here now. So that what happens is signal current comes from the uh, main battery wire. It goes into this little switch and then it goes out and then into the rev trigger and then back to the MOSFET, which then switches the high current. So that's how you keep the arming switch. You can do this with any arming switch if you want. Um, you just put it between the um, rev and the main feed from the battery cable. So you can do that in any MOSFET build if you want to add like a safety. It's really more of a safety, sliding safety. It's not actually a true arming switch because then you'd have to have another MOSFET and you'd have to use the main battery wire um, and you'd have to have that on the neutral side. So you can put arming switches in but then there's not room in here. So I'm going to use the sliding safety and uh, it just gives you a thing. If it's designed to be put in a pocket it makes sense doesn't it to have that. So just going to attach that up there. And then that little bit's going to go down into the common on this micro switch and then obviously the feed out will go off um, to the MOSFET and that will come from the other end. Got really shaky hands today for some reason. Right, so there's the micro switch is done. So you've got your arming switch, which just sits over in there, and then you've got your other switch, which is going to sit on the plinth here. Hopefully we can get all the wires for each of those to squeeze into position. It's a bit tight back here. It is annoying, but the beauty of silicon wire, of course, is it's very flexible. That's why we use it. Because that just screws down into there over the top. So you just have to make sure that all your wire fits. So I'll probably pull a little bit more red through just to give me a little bit more. It's always hard to say when you're putting it together how much you want. So there you go. And none of that wire will foul the trigger, which is really important too. The other thing that I did is that this screw port here, let's get to where I can show you it. This screw port here, I just shaved off the reinforcement rib on both sides to make a little bit more room for my wire. That's really not going to make a massive amount of difference if one side is shaved down. It's the pivot for the trigger, but it's not going to break. Not unless you're really, really cack handed. So I'll just shave a bit off. I like that. Just give me a bit more room for the trigger, for the wiring to go past the trigger. So that's through, those are in, now we can go to the other end, to the MOSFET. Now the beauty of this is that it's got a really, really easy to follow setup on here. It actually tells you what each one is. So for example, here you've got motor negative, motor positive, VBAT which is battery positive and ground which is battery negative and then um, on the other side there are the two pins here which are the switch and it actually says switch. You have to look quite carefully for that. It does actually say switch. Those, it doesn't matter which way around you go. Um, basically the bottom one, if you imagine, here's the, you can see on the board, look, there's the, where it goes. And uh, so that, that, one's, that one's coming from um, the positive side on the VBAT and then um, you've got the other side. So it's easy to do. And what you've got to remember is you've got to look at your orientation because you want this to sit the right way round and uh, you don't want it to get too much in the way so 
I remember, if I remember rightly, I had it round that way when I did it the first time. The other thing to check with this when you put the FET board in, or the FET if you're using a bare FET, is just to make sure that there's enough room around your, like that. You really don't want this to start fouling the cage. And the cage has got to sit really flat. If you start to squeeze the cage down, you're in danger of pushing those tags down and causing a short, which is really annoying.